Hey, good morning, New Nation. This is Justin here with NewMinds.tv, here to do the morning announcements and your moment of inspiration. I've got my tie on, so you know I mean business this morning. Hey, so uh, let me start with the announcements first, actually. So a couple of cool things to share. So first of all, uh, NewMinds.tv is, uh, we got it up and running last week on a Friday, so we're about a week into it. It's been so cool to see not only people being able to utilize the website, uh, again, newminds.tv, uh, not only be able to utilize it, but then also share it. So what happened is, about two weeks ago, we started by saying, how do we get videos out there for the world to use? We chose Facebook as a platform because it's an amazing way to connect. But not everybody has access to Facebook, especially students and kids. So newminds.tv was born, and so we've been taking all of our videos and putting them onto newminds.tv, and that is a way that uh, you can share it. So I want to just say how grateful that I am. Uh, our friends at TAGT, the Texas Association of Gifted and Talented, they shared that with their network. Um, my own kids go to school in Richardson, and just yesterday they had a chance to send out uh, an announcement of different resources to use, and we were included in that as well. Hey, I see Janet has joined us. Good morning, Janet. Morning, Doug. I was talking about how NewMinds.tv has been an amazing resource that people have been sharing out. It's these videos, but put onto an accessible uh, web page. And so just yesterday, I got an email from my kid's school that said, here are resources we recommend for extension learning. And sure enough, the 10th one down was NewMinds.tv. So it just gives me such great joy to know that what we're doing is able to, to impact and help people in this time of need. So just amazing. So that's the first announcement. Uh, the second one, I don't know why I rolled the L, sorry. <laughs> Steam a la rabia. Um, I'm sure I'm butchering that, but that's Steam in Arabic. And so we have Steam in Espanol, and that's with Catalina. And it's just this amazing chance to work on a cool project. Uh, yesterday she did these cardboard boxes made out of cereal boxes. So you could take things that are in your home and make this really cool like device. And she delivers the whole lesson completely in Spanish. So it's just a super cool way to see that. Well, uh, Stem Arabia is delivered completely in Arabic. So if you speak Arabic or you've always wanted to be immersed in the language or just have a chance to be immersed in the language and at the same time do a really cool STEAM project, they posted their first video um, at 8 o'clock yesterday. So of course you'll see it on our website. And pretty soon we'll have those up on newminds.tv. But yeah, it was really cool. I even came with a, a chart and a graph. And I enjoyed it. I liked watching it because uh, it was neat to kind of pick up on what, what they call cognates, those words that sound the same in both languages. So it was neat to hear like the word straws being used. Um, as you can tell, I'm, I'm not well versed in the Arabic language. But yeah, having a chance to hear those things gave me some anchor points that I could hold on to that kept me through the lesson. And as the lesson went on, I actually learned more and more stuff. Hey, good morning, Kristen. I was doing the announcements first, talking about how uh, NewMinds.tv is up and being shared. And we were shared out uh, from Richardson ISD just yesterday. So a huge piece of love to our, our ISD. And also how Steam and Arabia is there as well. Doug says, the NewMinds universe is born. Ah, it's so amazing, isn't it? So cool. And actually on that, I won't say too much about this. My last announcement is coming up pretty soon. In the next couple of days, we have... A, we have um, uh, a mailer coming out that we're going to send obviously digital right um, so subscribe on our on our on our newsletter list at newminds.tv we're going to send out a mailer that talks about um, ways that you can kind of flip that script if you're at home and you're hearing that whole I'm bored I've got nothing to do I'm stuck inside how do you take that script and flip it so that's going to be coming out tomorrow so super excited about that um, and then sometime very soon hopefully this was weekend um, we have one of our own inspirators who lives on a farm who's going to be sharing some of what she's been doing during this time. Um, and that includes super cute videos of baby goats. That's right. Super cute videos of baby goats. So at the very least, if you don't want to turn in, tune in for the science lesson, turn in for those cute little baby goats. So that'll be coming out in the next couple of days. So we're excited to announce that piece. And so, all right, let me move into the moment of inspiration. Yesterday, I got a lot of really great feedback. Even a few friends texted me and said, thank you so much. It was talking about when you have your kids at home, uh, homeschooling, and we dipped a little bit into educational psychology. Uh-oh, Kristen told me how to say it. Stim al ar 
you be ya. Are you be ya? Thank you. I knew I was butchering that. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. I'm back. I love these comments. Keep them coming in. Thanks, guys. Okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Christian just said, what? Baby goats? Yep. We got baby goats coming in. Okay. Sorry. Let me get back to the inspiration piece. So we talked yesterday a little bit about educational psychology, which is uh, we believe that kids have a chance and opportunity to build their own knowledge. And so what happens is, is whenever we tell them yes or no or right or wrong when it comes to learning, that stops learning. That's a behavioral uh, technique where like, like a hand slap might be like, a oh, I'm not going to do that as a punishment or uh, a cookie is a positive reinforcement piece. So when a kid is working on a project and they say two plus two equals you know, three, if we say no, that's not right, that's our instinct. That's the easy way to do it. But what's happening is, yeah, they'll learn. They'll learn that 2 plus 2 is not uh, 3, but they won't truly have that knowledge piece. They haven't built it on any of their learning. So it might sound like it's more complicated, but it's way easier in the long run, makes it way more peaceful for you to say things like, well, tell me how you got that 2 plus 2 equals 3. Can you explain that to me and help me out? So that was super helpful. And then another comment came in yesterday, too. Uh, this, is, this is from one of my friends. They're like, okay, this is great. This is super helpful, but what if... Uh, my kids aren't enjoying the homeschool piece at all, right? They feel kind of stuck inside. So today I want to take a quick little trip into social psychology, and I think you'll see why. This won't take very long at all, but I hope you appreciate it. So there was a social psychology experiment done where it was about the workforce and the workplace, right? And they were trying to figure out what made um, happiness at work. So what they did, like they do with experimental things, is they, um, in a college, and they set this up, and they have... Um, they had a desk, and they had a FICA tree, and they had a plant. Okay, I'm giving, like, I'm sorry, excuse me. FICA tree, FICA tree is a plant. Um, and a picture. And so what it was is that for the first group, the researchers set up the desk in a particular way. They set the picture up in a particular way on the wall. They put the FICA tree in a certain spot. And the job was to come in and take these, like, handwritten notes, and they had to type them down. So the work stayed the same. Okay, now, second group. They did this a little bit differently. They had the same objects, and they asked, they said, hey, how do you want to set up your office space? And so the, again, these are all college students that are coming in, right? Of course, they're getting paid like, what, $15, and after they just gave some plasma to get some money. So these kids come in, uh, college kids, and they say, hey, how do you want to set up your workplace? And so they get a chance to put the tree where they want, they get a chance to put the picture where they want, the uh, computer where they want, all that kind of stuff. Same exact work. So you can see they're making a control piece there. So the same exact work, which was taking this thing and typing it down. All right. Now, the researcher walks back in a few minutes later, and they say, man, I'm sorry, this is not appropriate for the experiment. And they reset the office to the exact same way that it was in the first group. Right? So that first group, exactly the way the picture was, the tree was, all that kind of stuff, they reset it. And then they have the, the, the group and the, and the participants continue. Okay, so now there's a third group. And I, I promise it's going to get relevant, so I hope you think this is interesting. So now with the third group, what they do is this. They say, okay, you can arrange the office any way you want to, right? And then they let them continue their work in that way. Same work, copying down the stuff, right? Taking a handwritten note and typing it down. And then what they do is they come back and they ask for satisfaction. Essentially two questions. How satisfied were you with your work? And how satisfied were you with your boss, a.k.a. the researcher who was doing the experiment? Okay, so, hey, morning, Ben. I see you've joined in. I'm talking about one of my favorite uh, social psychology experiments to help parents at home um, when they're thinking about homeschool and during this time of crisis what they have to do. Okay, so for the first group, uh, they said, hey, how was, how was the job? Eh, it was okay, right? How was your boss, a.k.a. the researcher who set this stuff up? Eh, they were okay. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So neither good nor bad, just kind of ambivalent. Now go to the second group. Now this is the group that was able to arrange the stuff however they wanted to and then had to put it back the way that it was in the first group, right? They didn't know about the first group. That's the way it was set up again. So you would think they'd be kind of ambivalent, right? Because this, it was the same work and the same setup. Not true. You have probably inferred that, but not true at all. So they said, hey, how was the work? It was stupid. <laughs> what? 
It's the same exact work as the first group. How was the work? Uh, it was stupid. And how was your boss? Uh, stupid, right? An idiot. Um, now, obviously, you're picking this up. It's because they were told you can't have this office the way that you want it to and then rearranged it. Now, the third group, the one that was allowed to rearrange the furniture any way they wanted to. Now, remember, this is not like super awesome furniture. This is like a ficatria tree, a plant, and like a desk, right, and a picture. Um, third group, how was, the, um, how was the work? Ready? Great. Are you kidding me? Great. It was great. It was the same work as the other two groups. They took something and they had to type it down. Okay, how is your boss? Ready for this one? Great. <laughs> because, because they let me do what I wanted to. All right. So now let me see if I can apply this to homeschooling and what you're having to go through right now. So yes, you're applying those techniques we talked about yesterday where you're not using, you know, no, yes, right, wrong. You're making it more open-ended and allowing for discussion, allowing the students to scaffold. But they still don't like it. They still don't like the idea that, you know, oh, i got to do this stuff. So let me see if I can bring it to maybe a, a very real example. Um, and this is me at the beginning of this week and what I went through. So you've got a spot in your home that you've set up for homeschool time, right? You've got your computer there. You've got your pencils. Um, the kids are all ready to go. For my kids, they had their iPad. Uh, we have their pencils and notebooks and all that kind of stuff all ready to go for homeschool. Um, so the first day of homeschool rolls around. This will be Monday this week for us. And I say, okay. Um, it is now nine o'clock. It is time to do math. And so they have to, you know, they, they pull up their computer and they find their stuff from their teacher and they find any kind of notes and they're like looking through it. Um, sure enough, <laughs> guess what their satisfaction has been? Or I guess I should say was. I've tried to fix this now. Satisfaction with the task at hand, doing schoolwork. Eh. And I could, I could tell you with all honesty, it was ambivalent. It's like, eh, 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 right? Okay, so now see what Justin started to do and his mistakes as we rolled into Tuesday and into Wednesday. So now the kids are like having this space and they like have gone all over the place and they've got their stuff laid out. And as much as I claim to know about this stuff, I still roll in and I go, guys, guys, this is not right. We, we, can't, have, we can't have this table be a mess. This is the table that we eat on, right? right? And this is literally what I did. I did the same thing that the researcher did. So I, um, I reorganized the kid's space, and I still had them do the same task. And sure enough, this was the epiphany that I had at the end of the day yesterday. Guess how much the kids like their schoolwork, the same schoolwork that they had. When I told them that their space wasn't appropriate and that they had to do their work at 9 a.m., right? Boom. Boom. Pushback, right? Pushback from both of my kids. So, hopefully you're picking up what I'm putting down. Today is my day to try this, and I'll chime back in again. And I hope that you can do this as well. So today, we are still doing the same work. We are still doing the stuff the teachers have sent. And we still have you know, our certain lessons and our certain activities we have to do. So the work has not changed. Um, I'm sticking to that, right? That's what we've been asked to do by our school district. Now, at the same time, what I am going to do is today I'm going to say, you know what, guys, this is your learning space. I will... I will pick a different spot than the kitchen table, right? So I will say, this is your learning space. You guys set this up however you want to, right? You put, that, you put your iPad over there if you want to. You know what? Get some stuffed animals. Bring those over here. And I'm going to see how they respond to it because just that one little element of choice can help us have so much satisfaction with our work or AKA for kids, their schoolwork that they have to do. And the other part is this. Now, I'll probably wait till a little bit later in the week to try this, or maybe even next week. But uh, um, the application is sound. The lesson is not lost. Perfect timing for a limited reset. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Doug says, what a great application of this right now. What I'm going to try a little bit later, too, is instead of saying 9 o'clock is this the work you have to do, I may try this. I may say you have, you know, you have your tech time, you have your uh, math time, you have your reading I don't care what order you do those in, as long as they all get done by, by a certain time. Not not ready to quite get there yet. I'm going to start with this whole part about choice of just the environment and see if it increases workplace satisfaction, <laughs> aka doing a schoolwork at my house. So, 
Okay, guys, I hope this has helped you. Um, again, thank you for the comments and for the text and for the feedback. This really helped me drive my lesson and message for today. Hey, stay tuned. We have an amazing day, as always planned. We have uh, Kristen up next with the Parent Power Hour. We have STEAM lessons uh, with Mr. Dorian for kindergarten through second. We have STEM en Espanol with Catalina. After that, we have uh, Mr. Walter for Around the World. We have Dungeon Verse. We have STEM again for third through fifth graders this time. We have From the Numi Vault. I'll be back today to do a lesson from our, some of our favorite lessons from the past eight years. And then Mr. Ben, our CEO. <laughs> the kids call him Mr. Ben. I guess I can call you, call you Ben. Uh, ben, our CEO, uh, will have a chance to, to cap the day out. Oh, my gosh. And I just saw uh, Kelly join. So I'll wrap out with this very last note and just say uh, excited about the announcement of baby goats. I won't tell you too much more about that. But um, Kelly definitely has something to do with that. So, all right, you guys are wonderful. Have an amazing day. Provide choice for your kids if you're inside the house. Provide choice for yourself if you're inside the house and have that work to do. And hope that hopefully that increases your workplace, a.k.a. home satisfaction. All right, guys. For Justin at NewMinds.TV, we provide real inspired learning for all. Hope you have an amazing day, and I hope you have a chance to pursue what you're passionate about and turn it into your talent. Bye.